about three years later, one of the leaders from the grocery company uh, called me and asked if I'd be interested in coming back. Welcome back to Career Therapy. My name is Martin McGovern, and today we are chatting life after layoff again with our special guest, Nicole Townsend. Nicole, according to your LinkedIn, it says that you elevate your brand, you help people elevate your brand by transforming the employee experience. You're a strategy, culture, and communications consultant and a mentor. But Nicole, thank you for joining us today. Tell us about yourself. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm a person that really uh, feels strongly about human connection, and I love people's stories. And I think that's shown throughout my career. I've had the opportunity to be a news reporter, be in PR, um, and then work and lead communications, learning and development. And these are all fields that have really fulfilled me um, in the way of helping people really understand their their strengths, um, helping them share their stories and unleash their potential. So professionally, that is what I do. And personally, uh, I'm a wife. I've been married almost 20 years next month and have two teenagers. And uh, my mom fortunately lives close by. We call her our teenager. So we have a very busy life uh, here in California. And um, I'm you know, something that I love to do really is is bring my career into my family and vice versa. So I absolutely love that. So many great tidbits in there that I hope we can get into all the <clears throat> all the stories today. Um, you mentioned that, you know, you've got this really fascinating background in news reporting and PR and storytelling that how did you get into the world of storytelling to begin with? Yeah, I think it started pretty young. I was very shy and I would often be just a listener. I would tag along with my mom when we were out and at gatherings and I loved writing. I got a little roll top desk when I was probably seven and I would love to write stories, draw, uh, write poems. And then in school, it started to be recognized that I was strong in writing. So I of course, ventured into to high school newspaper journalism. And I had decided at that point, I really wanted to be a newspaper reporter and really set my sights on, fortunately, uh, Sac State in California had a great journalism program. So headed there and got my degree. That's awesome. And what was it like being in the uh, world of journalism? I think that's something that a lot of people have external experience with, right? We've all seen the news and seen everything, but we, we're never really behind the scenes there. What's that world like? It is uh, chaotic and fun, exhilarating. Um, I would say it's full of emotion. I chose to write stories and, and tell stories in communities that really did not have a voice. And so that, that was very emotional. I would write often with the police in underserved areas. I would uh, write stories, many stories around social services. Um, and I spent a lot of time, my style was to spend a lot of time with people and the people I was writing about and try to convey everything um, for them through me and, and using all the senses. What was I seeing and hearing and how did it feel? Um, in that era of journalism, that was in the 90s. And there was more of a desire then for a long Form news feature story. And so I really had the opportunity to write people's stories um, in a different way than you probably would see them today in, in more smaller chunks. Yeah, not so much clickbait stuff back then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That was before clickbait, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, that's very cool. And so what was that transition like going from uh, that world into PR and media and all that stuff? Yeah, I, I think I had a little bit of a soft transition because I decided to move into media relations more, more out of the need of looking at my future and our ability to have a home and, you know, for me to be able to um, bring really a, you know, a financial stability into our, our family. 
And so I moved uh, into uh, media relations and I did that with a nonprofit that represented community clinics. So there was still this opportunity to tell a story of people in need and to really help connect those advocates and, and really even government entities that could help community clinics um, serve their patients in, in a positive way and help their health. That's fantastic. And so you're moving through your career, you're, you're switching from one area to another and, and you're going along at a good click. And of course, you know, this is the Life After Layoff podcast. So I'm curious, yes. what were you doing uh, leading up to your layoff experience? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, I was with a company that I had been with three times in my career. Uh, oh my. It's a yeah, a supermarket company, really reputable in California. And I had first worked for this company when I was right out of college and, or high school, excuse me, and going to college. And I was a grocery bagger. And so I did that for several years as I was working through college. And then after my community clinic role, um, we had seen a, a job for this company and entry-level communications. So it was corporate communications doing both internal and external communications. And actually it was my dad at the time had seen it in the newspaper and he really supported this company and loved their reputation. He was a businessman in the Sacramento area. And he had given me the ad back then in, in the newspaper circled in red and saying, you should really apply for this. And I did. And I got the role. And I was able to work my way up in nine years in communications to lead uh, internal communications. And it was an interesting time because, um, you know, I had the opportunity to work Sometimes my, my team was in marketing, sometimes it was in the HR function, sometimes it was in organizational effectiveness. So I got all those different exposures um, to really how do you leverage communication to do all of those things. So it was a really great opportunity. Um, in 2010, it was, it was a rough time uh, with the economy. And so there was a mass layoff and I was part of that layoff. I was really fortunate I got a role with a healthcare organization and um, the commute was even like a couple miles shorter. And yeah. <laughs> so I got that role within three weeks of my layoff and um, I learned a lot there about um, how you communicate with physicians and clinicians and healthcare. And then um, about three years later, one of the leaders from the grocery company uh, called me and asked if I'd be interested in coming back. And wow. I returned um, in 2013 and was um, in the marketing area. And then I switched over to HR and I eventually um, made my way to the executive table and led um, communications, learning and development for the company that I had started so many years ago as a courtesy clerk. That's such an amazing story. So we have, we have two instances uh, of your time with that company. And so take me back to that 2010 experience, because that was a crazy time for a lot of folks, right? Yes. Um, I know at that time, I knew a bunch of people that uh, had graduated the year before me in 2009, and their jobs all got furloughed because we were in a you know, yeah. recession at the time. And so bring me back to that, you know, period, what was happening? Um, you know, the, the, when you got when you got tapped on the shoulder at that time, was it something that you kind of saw coming? Was it expected? Um, or did it kind of catch you off, you know, catch you by surprise? That one until the week of, I, I hadn't anticipated that. Um, for one, I was the head of communication. So typically I'd be involved in any kind of messaging and support around that type of transition. And, then something happened the week prior. Um, there were several executives that were um, that had their positions eliminated, and one of them was my leader, who at the time was the head of marketing. And then I thought, 
oh no, something else is going to happen. This doesn't feel like um, this is all that's happening. And so for about a week, um, you know, other coworkers and I were wondering what was going to happen. Um, and then that following Friday, a week after those executive layoffs, a number of us got text messages to come to um, a meeting room, the auditorium. And they did that by function. So you were with your colleagues. And I just remember there were rows of chairs, you know, and we were sitting and all hearing that news together. And it just felt very surreal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember holding the hands of the women on either side of me who are younger and, and newer in their career and uh, just holding on to them, you know, and, and I remember um, at the time, HR, they were really, really empathetic and compassionate as they could be. But um, I know that had to be hard. I, we, we left that room and, and even the owner of the company came and shook all of our hands and you could tell, you know, that he, he felt, he felt really bad about what was happening um, because that was a culture and the reason I returned to it that was so caring about its people and, and knew that its people were the heart of, of who they were as a company. Yeah, especially, I mean, you, you spent, you said nine years there, right? The first time through? Yeah, that, yeah, that was my second time, yes. Yeah, sorry, second time <laughs> yes. through, yeah, thank goodness. Yes. And like nine years, you know, a lot of folks, especially younger folks now, it's, you know, the average time that people stay in a job is like two to four years. So even trying right. to picture nine years at a company and then going through an experience like that, I think a lot of people would, uh, I, I can definitely understand the the weight of a day like that. And it's interesting that, you know, companies really do, they try, they try really hard to make it a good experience, as good as you can make an experience like that, right? Right. And, yeah. you know, yours is a case where it's the first time I've heard a text message and a group sort of uh, experience happen. And so what are your thoughts on that? On, on being a communications you know, specialist and expert, what are your thoughts on the different ways that, uh, you know, on, on the way that the communication was, uh, on, on your side, what was it like receiving communications in that way? Was it good to have people around you? Would you have preferred to be, you know, on your own getting that message? What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I think that's really difficult and it can be very personal to the individual. Uh, also, you have to think about what's realistic for the company, and particularly right now, in person just is is not possible unless you're doing it by Zoom or by mm -hmm. um, video of some sort. So that makes it more difficult, I think. Um, I think that being with people that time that was helpful for me and many of us. And because it was such a large layoff, it was 40% of the corporate office. I understand why they did it that way versus mm -hmm. bringing people in individually. Yeah. So there's no perfect way to do this. And it's heart wrenching for the people who have to deliver the message. Um, and anything companies can do to make that easier and more personal is what I would advise. But it's never, it's never easy. Right. And you said you, you know, you, you re rebounded quite quickly after, after that first one. And so what was your experience, you know, going back into the job market after nine years? Um, and, and, you know, what, what, how did you find that next role? Was it a mixture of networking, online applications? What, what do you think helped you the most in that transition? I know a lot of people will say luck, and, and that was part of it, um, but it was the connections I had in the work I had done with others. So I had a former boss contact me um, who had been my boss at the grocery company prior and now was at the healthcare company. And he heard the news and he contacted me immediately. And he said, we may have a role here for you um, and we need to fill it quickly. Uh, because the leader is going to be going on maternity leave soon. And so she needs someone in that she can um, teach the ropes and, and get prepared for her leave uh, to support the areas she supported. So it, it definitely, there are a number of factors that played into why I 
got to start within three weeks. I don't think that was even very typical for their hiring process. Um, but it, it worked out, the timing. Um, and again, he knew my work. He knew what I could contribute. And so he felt confident to recommend me for that role. It's amazing. Yeah, it, shows, it really shows the importance of being able to form and, and sustain those like relationships, both internally and externally um, right. throughout your career. And so a few years go by and, uh, yes. and you're brought back. What, what was the, uh, what was the journey back like for you? Well, it did, it took a while actually. So they had first reached out and, um, then I think they were just working through internally, you know, how, how to rebuild this area of the organization. And I, I was really excited to hear from them just again, because I, I maintained connections with so many people that I had worked with for so many years. And um, they actually were at a point in time where they really could use the support of someone who could help communicate the values and the purpose and really elevate um, the work experience for the team members there. And at the same time, um, they needed someone still to do external PR. So I came back to a pretty big role. It, um, it was in marketing, and I was responsible for PR and social media, community relations, uh, the customer response center, uh, events, and also internal communication. Oh so it <laughs> crossed both marketing and NHR, which is typically what I do. I'm not um, a, a marketing data analyst or expert. I'm not a human resources expert, but I can bring communication, um, learning, development all together and look at it from the experience standpoint, from the customer and from the employee. So, um, it seemed like a great opportunity. I knew the company, it was a great challenge to come back and to kind of help rebuild that area um, that had been really something that hadn't been quite as present since I had left and since they had really had to decrease the number of people in the corporate team. And how long were you there uh, this, the third time around? Six years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. And in those six years, what... I always love to, you know, chat with folks about what they enjoyed most about a role. I think sometimes going through a layoff can sort of sour a whole experience, but it seems like you're pretty positive about it. But what were your favorite yeah. parts of that role? Well, I got, I got the opportunity to move into HR a few years in, and uh, that's where I feel like I, I had this chance to choose. It was like a fork in the road where I had to choose. Did I still want to work? more on the external side or really with my heart with the internal. And I decided it was with employees and the employee experience. So um, that was really great to be able to explore those things and have a lot of freedom to do that and be innovative. Uh, I think things I'm most proud about is really the organization went from not having really known values or purpose to it just being on, on the tip of everyone's tongue, understanding why they were there, how they can contribute. Um, and you know, what really was their personal purpose and how could they grow within that organization? So excited to bring some things forward around talent development, leadership development. We got to create um, leadership programs that weren't in existence uh, for future store leaders and, and got to spend so much time with these incredible people who had so much passion for their customers and the industry. Uh, we got to create a new way to measure employee fulfillment based on commitments that the employees wanted to see their leaders make to them. So that was a whole new way of looking at engagement. Um, just so many things, whether it was um, how, how the team and the team of leaders would come together during crisis, because crisis happens in every organization, how they would work through change um, to really how they would 
exhibit what the values were and, and what the people meant. Um, those were things I'm proud to be part of. Incredible. Yeah, you've really seen every side of like the business communications being both on the creating side and the receiving side and, and being there for so long. Um, right. And so as you're going through that experience, um, you know, bring us up to the point where there was another shift, another change. What, what happened the third time around? Well, I, I saw it coming. There were some changes organizationally about a year before uh, my position was eliminated. And uh, I think really where, where that was going and where I saw it going was they probably needed to consolidate a bit further their executive team and, and the responsibilities. So I anticipated that could be happening. You know, I, I just, I try to spend that time still working toward how to impact the employee experience, how to support my team and help them grow in the event it would occur. And it did happen in January. So uh, I think by the time it happened, I had processed a lot of that and been prepared. And what were some of the ways that when you say you processed and prepared, like what, what was the, what was your thinking at the time? Like how did you sort of, a lot of folks really, you know, their identity and the company identity sort of merge at a certain point, especially working with a company for so many years, but maybe you've sort right. of had like a, a you know, a, a, what, what, where am I thinking of? Almost like um, an inoculation to that, you know, throughout the experiences <laughs> you've had. Um, how, how did you sort of build that separate sense of self so that when that moment came, it wasn't as big of a shock for you? Yeah, you're right about that. And, and you know, there are some people who say that you need to go into a company and not allow yourself and your identity to be intertwined. And for me personally, that's just not possible. And particularly to your point in a company that had been a part of my life, basically my whole working life. So I loved uh, the people and the work. And yet I did know that it didn't define me. So I think the second time around, having been through it one previous time, that had helped me. It had helped me know that what I had done there would stay there. It would, it would always be there. And what I had taken from there was this great opportunity to grow and learn and do different things that helped me become a better professional, a better business person. So I think what I did throughout the last year, it was emotional for me, but I knew I needed to stand on my own and, and not be defined by that. Um, so I had, I had great support. Um, I had a coach, a career coach, and, and uh, some great support in helping me see who I was on my own. It sounds like as you've gone through the years with this company, you know, it helped you realize what, what you wanted to bring, what value you wanted to bring to other people as well. And you spent a lot of time developing other people within the company and, and seeing yeah. that that was something you were good at. And so when this happened in, you said it was around January, right? Yes. And so when this happened, uh, what was that day like? How, how did it differ from the first time uh, when that text message came? What was this process like? Yeah, it was very different, actually. I had just taken two weeks off for the holidays, and I never would take two weeks in a row off, but something told me, oh, do it. You know, the kids are getting a little older. Who knows how long they're going to really want to hang out. So <laughs> I, uh, I had just come back to work that Monday, uh, early January, and I came back to a desk that still had, you know, was full of holiday cards and gifts people had left and books for our next leadership program. And I was focused on putting the finishing touches on a strategy around employee experience. And I had a meeting that day. Normally I would have a weekly meeting with my leader. And I did think it was a little odd the, the week or so before she changed the time. It was mm. normally midday and it changed to four o'clock. And it just was like, hmm, okay, don't dwell on it. If, if that happens, it will happen. There's nothing you can do. 
And so I worked through that day. I got to see everybody again after the two weeks. And uh, then I went up to the third floor for my meeting and I got tex a text from my boss and she said, meet me in this room, which was a mm -hmm. different room than we would normally meet. And it happened to be situated over by the HR team. And I knew when I walked up, their uh, building had some modern glass um, walls and, and they were frosted in the middle, but at the bottom, you could always see whose shoes, right? Or oh, <laughs> in boy. the room. The and I saw, I saw two pair of shoes. So I knew. I knew that my boss was in there with my HR representative and I just took a deep breath and walked in. It's so interesting how those subtle things, right? And, and again, companies are trying to do this right. They're not trying to like yeah, catch definitely. us off guard or do anything, but it's, it's always so interesting how, you know, offices work in a very certain way. And when things are slightly off, like, red flags just immediately pop up in our minds and we're like, uh oh, oh, right. Wait a second. And so after, you know, this experience, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're back looking at what do you want to do next? Right. You're right. You're put back in this position of, all right, where do I go? What was that like? What was it like transitioning from this most recent layoff into what you're doing now? Well, it took a little time but not too much time now that I think about it. I, I started immediately looking for roles and exploring uh, just different companies in my area because I, I don't want to move. Again, my mom's nearby. so And my kids are really rooted in this community. Mm -hmm. But um, started in January looking, networking, um, learning more things, you know, taking courses, all kinds of things and, and to really hone in on what I wanted to do. And it always came back to what my previous role had been, my last role at my last company, which was that focus on the employee experience. And how do I take this desire to help employees have the best experience at work and help companies get business results? How do I bring that together? And so I started working on that a bit. Uh, I did go on a few job interviews and that was kind of odd because really I hadn't interviewed in probably 15 years. Oh yeah. Um, so, uh, so it was a good experience. And what I was had that three... first interview like when you went back in after 15 years? I was nervous and it was this huge table, but they were very nice people. Um, but I was really nervous and having interviewed so many people in my previous job, you know, it really, it turned it around for me of how, how people feel. And it just reminded me of that, um, that, that whole nervousness you have and am I saying the right thing? And so it was good practice. Definitely. And um, in February, my mom broke her femur. Oh. So January was job loss. February was femur. And so she, she was at dance night and I was there. And so she, uh, she broke her femur, had to have surgery. And since I was not working, um, but still looking for work, I, I probably took on the majority of her care once she was home. And so that was pretty intense, but I still was trying to do some things. So actually, at that time, a former colleague of mine contacted me, and she is um, an executive for a restaurant uh, organization, and she asked me to do some work for her. And then that really gave me the confidence to say, maybe I can do this. And so I actually launched my company Experience Counts from my mom's kitchen table uh, in February. And now I'm here. That's amazing. First off, congratulations. Second of all, Thank second you. off, at dance night? <laughs> yes. That's amazing. I mean, that's a, that's a whole nother story that I want to hear yes. for sure. Yes. Uh, it sounds like a real party. Um, <laughs> breaking, breaking femurs at dance night. Um, but, yeah. but I hope she's doing all right. 
Um, She's great. Thank that's you. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And then, <laughs> um, and it is interesting that it's like, you know, once we get put into that sort of job seeker space, right, where we're in between things, there, there's always some feeling of like, where am I? Like, right, there's yes. what's up, what's down. And all it takes is like a project or something to ground ourselves to. That's right. And we're like, oh, wait, here we go. Now I know what to do. So that's absolutely amazing. So how did you come yeah. up with the idea for your, for the name? How did you come up with like your business plan? You did it from that kitchen counter. What, what was that process like? Because I feel <laughs> like that's a super empowering place to get to in your career to start something on your own. So I'm really curious about that process for you. Yeah, the name came to me. It was the first name that I thought of. And there are many times that happens with me uh, where it's just, it's it's somewhere there and right away it pops and and you know it's right. And so I think experience counts really not only represents the employee experience and that it matters and it matters not only to the employee but to the business but a part of that is about me and my experience and that it counts as well and that I have uh, a background that's varied and unique and and I can really help companies as they're trying to navigate that. That's super cool and, and what sort of folks do you do you work with? So I'm fortunate. I have a few really consistent clients and they're keeping me really busy. Uh, healthcare industry and I have retail industry and then restaurant is there as well. So I love that because it, they're very different. And yet, you know, humans are all, uh, there's a lot of commonalities mm -hmm. in human nature, human experience that you can apply. But I really love being part of different organizations. That's amazing. Yeah. So at the end here, we'll, we'll tell people how to find you if they, if they want to reach out and get in touch. Um, but one thing I'm really curious about, and we haven't talked about this online or, or online here, um, you've been in such high positions in these organizations and you've gone through some layoffs yourself, but I'm curious, have you ever been on the other side? Have you ever had to let someone go or, uh, you know, be that be on that side of things. And I think that's something that hasn't really been explored in these conversations yet. So I'm kind of curious if there's anything that you'd want to share from that perspective that folks might, you know, might be helpful for folks to know who are going through a similar situation. Yeah, yes, I have. I have personally uh, had to lay someone off, eliminate their position. And then again, being part of internal communications and the communication strategies I've had, uh, I've had to create that whole structure and support the conversations if it, if it may be broader uh, for other parts of the organization. And what I can tell you is no one ever wants to do this. Uh, it's heart-wrenching. It's difficult. Uh, a leader who really leads with their heart and mind it's going to give them a pit in their stomach for that day if not you know many sleepless nights before uh, you're you're changing someone's path and it's not an easy message to share and there's no perfect way to do it and i know having done this before you you think about all the scenarios. How will this person react? How can I be prepared? Will, will they say this? Will they cry? Will they be angry? Uh, you just don't know until the moment you're in the conversation and you have to be prepared to respond in, in the way that's best for them in that moment. It's very hard. Yeah, I like how you phrase that and the way that's best for them in that moment, right? Because one of the things that we try to encourage is like, you know, a lot of people when they get that news, they either go numb or like they don't know what to say or they immediately break down. There's a lot of different reactions and all of them are normal and justified, right? Yeah. It's, it's a it's a tough experience for anyone to go through. And so I think it's it's nice of you to share that side of things a little bit and give a little peek, a little window into the fact that there are people on the other side too. It's not this, 
you know, blind, you know, robot that doesn't see our faces. Like it's a real person and they're trying, they are really trying to, to give us an experience. that's not gonna, you know, and I think it's a testament to, you know, the companies you've worked at that you've returned, you know, if it's done well, it doesn't necessarily sever all your relationships for the future. I think a lot of people That's worry right. that like bridges get burned when these things happen. And, you know, so often it's, it's just part of doing business and it's an unfortunate part of doing business. But if you're going to try and create a company that employs people, you're creating something that's going to have to let go of some people at some point too, because there's no perfect yeah. market situation that never ebbs and flows. And so, um, I'm very excited uh, for what you're building now, and I'm very excited to point people your way and 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 let them know about what you're doing. So what sort of folks are, are you looking to connect with in the future and how could they find you? You know, I would love to talk to any business that wants to explore, you know, how they're doing with the employee experience now, how they might uh, continue to look at that and look at it not only as the right thing to do for their people, but as a competitive business advantage. And, and I think that there are those companies in every industry. And like I said, I, I do love learning about new and different industries. So I'd welcome anyone to connect with me on LinkedIn, Nicole Townsend. And I also have, of course, a LinkedIn page for my company, Experience Counts LLC. And we'll link to all that. And it's spelled N-I-C-O-L-E-T-O-W-N-S-E-N-D. So anyone who's curious, uh, look her up and reach out. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story. I think it was definitely eye-opening for a lot of folks to see both sides of that situation. I also hear you know, that there's multiple instances of this happening in our careers, and it's not something to be ashamed of, it's something to learn from and grow from. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Martin. Thanks so much for stopping by this episode of the Career Therapy Podcast. It's been a pleasure having you. And if you're curious about what we do here at Career Therapy, head on over to www.careertherapy.com to see all of our coaching options, resources, and links to other things we got going on. If you would like to share your story on this podcast, something that you've gone through, a transition you've experienced in your career, whether it's getting a job after college or going through a layoff or getting back into the workforce after raising your family, we would love to hear from you. Head over to linkedin.com slash in slash Martin McGovern and shoot me a DM. Let me know what's going on and I really like to share your story with the world. What we're trying to do here is really normalize the emotional side of the job search because we all go through it. We all have tough times in our careers and sharing these stories really helps people feel less alone and feel more empowered to take their career back into their own hands and make something of it. So thank you again for stopping by. If you'd like to leave a like or a comment, subscribe or share, or leave us a review on iTunes, and I think maybe even Spotify, we'd really appreciate it. Best of luck to you in all of your career endeavors, and I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.